introduce tonight's speaker, Luis Morales. He is joining us through the Zoom platform all the way from San Pancho, Mexico. Uh, San Pancho is in Nayarit and is close to Puerto Vallarta. It is easily accessible by bus or taxi from Puerto Vallarta. Uh, so for anyone visiting the area, I highly recommend Luis as a guide. Three of us in Audubon, myself, Kathy Patterson, and Eugenia Becker have um, had Luis as a birding guide and uh, enjoyed it immensely. Luis's education was as a marine biologist. However, for the last uh, 10 years, he's been entirely dedicating his career to bird conservation. During part of the year, he leads birding tours and the remainder of the year, he devotes his time to conservation projects involving birds and their habitats. He is currently the director of the nonprofit organization San Pancho Bird Observatory, which he established in 2011. Um, Luis is a very, very delightful guide, very good at pointing out a wide variety of birds. And I hope some of you in the audience will get to go birding with Luis in Mexico. So right now, um, I'm excited to introduce Luis Morales. Thank you, Judy. Thank you uh, so much for, uh, for such a nice introduction. And uh, I just want to make sure that uh, you are already uh, seeing my screen. Yes, we are. Yes, we're seeing your screen. Uh-huh. Awesome. Well, uh, thank you so much for the invitation, uh, Judy, and to uh, all the Salem Audubon Society team who have been wonderful at facilitating this talk. And uh, tonight, I would like to share with you this, uh, this story entitled Bird, Birds Connect Our World. And uh, it is uh, partly my own story as a, uh, as a professional, you know, and uh, how I became a bird watcher and, uh, and how that turned into, uh, uh, into, you know, me becoming an ornithologist and also uh, dedicating my, my life entirely to this mission of bird conservation. So um, tonight's uh, talk, uh, okay, okay. Can you see the second screen now? The second uh, slide? No, not yet. Okay, okay. Let's see what's happening. Okay, hold on one second. Oops. Sorry about that. Okay. Can you see the full screen now or are you seeing the whole? We're seeing two two uh, panels now. The the number one and the number the next slide. There you go. Okay. That's it. Okay. Sorry about that. Okay, so um, tonight's uh, talk is gonna be in uh, three parts to make it a little more dynamic. I have a lot of images to share. We're gonna make a quiz game, and I'm gonna provide you the, the instructions uh, next. Uh, and also, I will uh, tell you where uh, San Pancho is located and why does this matter for birds. Uh, to then begin uh, telling you my own, uh, my own story, and then we will have some um, time for questions and answers. So the, 
quiz that I, we're going to have a, a, will require you to have a, a pen and paper handy. And the, during the presentation, we're going to have uh, 20 slides with a number in them and the, the quiz number. So, um, yeah, if you can, you know, just try to identify as many birds as possible. Uh, most of the birds uh, uh, in the quiz are migratory birds. So then at the end of your presentation, I, I mean, at the end of the presentation, you can send us your response either to the chat and, the, and we'll see who, uh, who can get to win this, uh, this beautiful book called The Birds of, of San Pancho and Other Poems of Place. And uh, this is a book uh, written by Lucille Blank Bay. She's from California. And she was a visitor who happened to visit San Pancho some years ago. And she was inspired by the colors and sounds of the birds to write this book. So here we go. To get started, uh, this is uh, species number one. I'm sure uh, many of you have seen it off the Oregon coast. And uh, I'm going to um, start telling uh, that uh, the town of San Pancho, you know, that the real name is San Francisco, but everybody refers to our village as San Pancho, is uh, 50 kilometers north of Puerto Vallarta. And uh, so we are on the, along the Pacific Flyway, in the left side of the map, we have sort of a, a, a map of the migratory species. And we can see that uh, there is, uh, the, the darker areas are the, the areas with sort of a higher diversity of species. So our area uh, hosts uh, from uh, 35 to uh, 41 species of uh, migratory uh, 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 birds in the winter. And uh, all together, we have uh, about uh, 300 species in our, in our area. There you have some uh, figures about Mexico's diversity and the states of um, Jalisco and Nayarit, including the, the endemic species. So um, this area, the Puerto Vallarta area and the Sierra de Vallejo mountains that are just north of Puerto Vallarta, are considered a center of genetic origin. So we are very rich in, uh, in terms of endemics. And also we are an important um, wintering area for many uh, Western forest birds. So also uh, this village that is uh, very colorful and very, uh, very charming. It's only about uh, three to 4,000 people, but um, this town was designed in uh, 1970 to be a model community uh, uh, as part of a governmental uh, 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 view, you know, by Mexico's, Mexico's uh, president of Mexico. And uh, currently uh, our uh, small town uh, has uh, significant efforts, you know, for uh, conservation, including a sea turtle conservation program that um, has been running for over 30 years. Uh, also a uh, jaguar conservation efforts for over a decade. And also uh, we have a fantastic uh, community center called Entre Amigos that uh, provides environmental education to uh, our local community, but also neighboring communities. And is in charge of our recycling program. Or, uh, that it's like a self-sustaining program for over a decade now. Um, this uh, complex of warehouses in the town that were part of this uh, agro-industrial um, uh, model in the, in the 70s uh, eventually became a cultural center. And right now, um, uh, San Pancho offers many cultural opportunities, you know, from music festivals and um, different cultural festivals throughout the year. Uh, and they also uh, we are having a growing um, tourism and birding uh, industry, not only in San Pancho, but also in the, in the region. So uh, much of the work that um, our organization is doing is 
thanks to uh, these collaborations, you know, and these uh, contexts, you know, of a uh, model community like uh, our village sometimes. So um, right now I'm gonna go ahead and get started with um, sharing my story, uh, which is a, a story that became uh, uh, international uh, uh, little by little, or maybe from the beginning, uh, it was meant to be international. And it was um, inspired by uh, some of the birds that we see in the screen that are uh, uh, some of our uh, endemic species and uh, their colorfulness and their beauty was part of what um, inspired me to dedicate you know my my attention and my my study uh, uh, to to bird watching you know and this was um, a journey that became you know that started in uh, the southern part of the banderas bay in a small village uh, you can only get by boat called uh, yelapa we moved there in 2003 and uh, we were we went there to start an environmental education program uh, based around the uh, recycling. Uh, in the picture, you can see uh, the the some of the children from um, uh, the House of Imagination, which was a nonprofit organization that we started in Jalapa um, back then. And uh, in the photograph, you can see two adults. Uh, on the left side, it's uh, my mom, who uh, uh, she's no longer around with us, uh, carrying my oldest son, Quetzal, who was newborn. Uh, right now, he's uh, 16 years old. And uh, you can see my wife, Wendy, in the right side. You know, we were doing one of our first outings with the kids of uh, this community center using a uh, a, a cardboard binoculars and uh, this was our first um, environmental education effort um, back in 2003 2004 uh, in 2004 I, I, uh, I started my first um, uh, guiding uh, experiences you know as a, as a birder uh, there I am with a, a, a French uh, intern from uh, uh, the House of Imagination from our community center. And she was one of my first clients to hire me uh, to take them birding. And we are along the Yelapa River. Uh, from there, uh, I moved uh, to Puerto Vallarta with my family, with my wife and my young uh, son Quetzal, who you can see there in a in a backpack, he will go uh, birding with me uh, 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 everywhere. And uh, as you will see uh, later, he still continues to do that. So uh, while in Puerto Vallarta, um, I, I, we spent uh, nearly a year there. We uh, had the opportunity of, uh, uh, or I had the opportunity of working with other uh, uh, birding companies such as Birding in Mexico and um, EcoTours as well as collaborating with um, other bird conservation programs like a, a parrot rescue uh, center in Puerto Vallarta, who uh, we still collaborate with after all these years uh, called SEMBAC. It's a wonderful uh, nonprofit uh, uh, located in Puerto Vallarta and they take care of uh, uh, birds that have been confiscated and they do a, a great deal of um, rescuing birds and also uh, providing environmental education. So here's a quiz number two, one of the birds that connects our, our continent. And uh, from there, we move uh, over to San Pancho or San Francisco in 2007. And uh, in San Pancho, because of these um, dry conditions that I mentioned uh, uh, before, you know, the existence of other nonprofit organizations and other efforts, it helped to establish very soon, within a few months, 
uh, the San Pancho Birding Club, which was uh, an initiative uh, supported by a, a private company that I was working for as a sustainability advisor. And they would uh, literally pay me to take these kids out during the weekends and uh, to work in collaboration with the community center and with local schools to take um, uh, kids uh, on outings during the weekends. In here, uh, we can see some of the kids from a, from a, local, uh, uh, from a local school uh, doing some outings. And uh, this is our first uh, uh, logo for the San Pancho Birding Club back then. And uh, we will do these outings uh, oftentimes with the help and the assistance of uh, 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 part-time residents, like the people shown in the screen. We are at our uh, local estuary there in the, in the screen. And uh, we will also take kids on the, uh, you know, during summer camps, it will be one of the activities that we will do. And so many of the kids in our community over these years had the opportunity to experience bird watching in their, in their own community. So more outings with the, with the local kids. And the, uh, this work also um, expanded into a scholarship program uh, from our local community center called Entre Amigos. So you can see uh, a, a, a typical um, a field excursion to our local estuary where we would um, bring some, uh, some snacks, you know, and uh, also study materials for the kids to start making their own uh, observations. And uh, this uh, effort actually resulted in our first uh, local guide that uh, had uh, 50 of the uh, most common local species. And uh, the kids did most of the research. We did the compilation uh, in English and Spanish with drawings from the kids and also photographs from, um, from some uh, local uh, photographers and supporters to our organization. In 2010, um, the, the recession, you know, the, the economic recession that hit the, the US economy and the world economy um, made the company that I was working for uh, went bankrupt. So this was an opportunity for me to uh, sort of gain courage and um, start my own, uh, my own uh, bird watching company with experience that I had gained during the, the previous years living in San Pancho. And uh, we launched uh, our first website as a company building San Pancho Eco Tours with some of the tours uh, from around the, the area. And here's one of the birds that we commonly see in many of the areas that we uh, visit and that I'm sure you are very familiar with. Uh, this is one of my favorite peeps <laughs> that uh, they are wintering already here in our beautiful coast. So uh, during this uh, first um, year as Virding San Pancho Eco Tours, we got to um, share the experience of the same places where we have done education in the past years uh, with international and uh, uh, domestic um, tourism. We create uh, family experiences and there in the bottom left you can see uh, we offered a breakfast in the back of uh, of my uh, SUV, and this is how many of you uh, got to uh, got to know me. <laughs> we started taking people all over the place, you know, from the ocean. This is the upper uh, photo is from uh, the Marietta Islands tour. It's a, a, a marine park that is uh, very close from our area, where you can see blue-footed boobies and many other birds. And then in the bottom, we have some photographs from uh, San Sebastián del Oeste.
Luis, do we lose you? Great guest, and also um, over the years they have become great connections, you know, and great supporters to our organization. In the screen, I have um, a, the family who were responsible for our first uh, Oregon connection. This is the Runkle family. They are uh, a, a, some of them live in uh, Portland, and some of them in Ashland, Oregon. And it was actually um, Didi Runkle from uh, from Ashland, Oregon, who first referred me to um, the Klamat Bird Observatory in Oregon when she heard me. Um, speak about a uh, bird migration and the importance of working together and uh, she will hear my frustration but also my excitement you know of uh, like uh, seeking for collaboration and she had the great uh, um, idea of connecting me to the Klamath Bird Observatory that, um, as you can see, uh, uh, is something that changed my life and the life of uh, many others. So uh, this is one of the birds uh, that connects our riparian habitats and also uh, many uh, wetlands and uh, aquatic ecosystems. And the... Uh, in uh, 2011, uh, this uh, connection to the Klamath Bird Observatory uh, resulted in my involvement in uh, the Western Working Group of Partners in Flight. Uh, you can see the logo of Partners in Flight there on the right hand side of the screen. And uh, you're probably familiar with it. This is a consortia that gathers uh, institutions and nonprofit organizations as well as uh, 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 nonprofit organizations from Canada, the US and Mexico originally and now it's become international. And the whole idea about Partners in Flight that it's uh, like a vol voluntary um, uh, participation is uh, to work together for bird conservation. So in 2011, they had a meeting in uh, Mazatlan, Mexico called SOS Western Mexico. They were desperately seeking for uh, partners in Mexico, in speci especially in Western Mexico to make this uh, partnership happen. So I was there representing the idea of starting the San Pancho Bird Observatory. I didn't really know what a bird observatory was about, but I knew it had to do with uh, advancing bird conservation. And I knew that uh, uh, bird watching would be a great part of it. So I went ahead and um, um, participated in this meeting, became friends of some of the people that you see in the screen and you will continue continue to see during the next uh, slides. This um, participation, you know, and involvement uh, with the Klamath Bird Observatory uh, resulted in a, an invitation by the Klamath Bird Observatory and also uh, by Oregon State University to participate in the international uh, uh, program uh, for the U.S. Forest Service that uh, back then in 2012 involved uh, part uh, students from uh, all over the world and uh, I went to the climate region for four months in the summer to learn about bird banding. So in here you can see some of the photographs you know about my experience learning uh, <clears throat> about uh, bird banding and at the end of my stay in, uh, in Oregon, I was able to drive to Vancouver, Canada for the North American Ornithological Conference in, in British Columbia, Canada. And uh, this um, resulted in uh, my first uh, involvement, you know, on my first connection to a trinational um, group uh, that included also a, a researchers from the Environmental uh, Canadian Agency, uh, Environment and Climate Change Canada, 
that were interested in um, learning more about the migratory connectivity of yellow-breasted chat, that, by the way, is the, the mascot or the logo of um, the Klamath Bird Observatory in Oregon. And, the, and it's also a, a priority species for British Columbia and a common species in my backyard in Mexico. So I was very thrilled, you know, I'm very excited about happening to be in this uh, presentation and meeting these, um, these people, you know, who were um, uh, really seeking to, uh, to advance, you know, the understanding of these migratory species that are priority for, for Canada and also important uh, for, the, for the US as they are migratory species. So coming back to, uh, coming back to Mexico, you know, uh, uh, during the next years, uh, I began to uh, work not only with children, but also to work with uh, uh, college students. Here in the photograph, you can see some of the um, interns coming to, uh, uh, to work with our community center. And these are uh, Mexican students coming from different careers, volunteering with us. Uh, we started also uh, working with other nonprofit organizations, uh, taking, um, a, in this case, uh, some students from Indiana during a learning experience on sustainability. And uh, in 2013, I was invited uh, to a, a Partners in Flight meeting in uh, Snowbird, Utah. And the whole idea of this meeting was to advance uh, the, the trinational conservation strategies for migratory birds. So I was very excited, you know, to, uh, to be included in these, uh, in these discussions and in these, to participate in all of these um, uh, strategies, you know, these larger scale, um, strategies for migratory bird conservation and, and representing my region and my, uh, and my kind of newborn organization. Here we have another of our migratory species that connect our, our areas. And uh, in 2014, we finally formalized our uh, nonprofit status as an organization. And uh, we also began to sort of figure out our first uh, a conservation model, you know, and uh, this model was, you know, as an organization kind of integrating the education and capacity building with uh, community uh, development, through bird watching with conservation science. So this was our first um, attempt, you know, to kind of uh, model the activities that we were doing and that were um, a, a sort of a creating or a, a integrating our conservation strategy. And this was, this was part of the result of all these um, meetings and all these uh, strategies, you know, because the, the idea of Partners in Flight is to have sort of the same guidelines or the same principles, you know, for uh, migratory bird conservation. So in 2014, I also got to visit the uh, the National Training Center for Conservation in uh, West Virginia as a student uh, with a fellowship program called Community Climate Change uh, Fellowship Program. And this was all about um, uh, sharing experiences with other environmental educators uh, from all over the US, Mexico, and Canada uh, working on uh, climate change um, education. So it was all about sharing experiences. And uh, so my work with the bird of, San Pancho Bird Observatory took me here to share with these fellows. But it also took me to places, you know, uh, like the Volcan uh, Tacana in Chiapas. And this is at a meeting in uh, 
with the southwest southeastern net network of um, community bird monitoring and this is uh, one of the groups this was also in 2014 so i was sharing you know my experience and kind of learning uh, also from uh, other folks in, uh, in different parts of north america but at the same time sharing with this community uh, of um, uh, bird people in Mexico. So it was very, very uh, rich experience, you know, uh, sharing my own knowledge. There's a photograph on the right hand side uh, in Chiapas with my son Quetzal, who by then was, he was already like uh, uh, eight years old. <laughs> and he is very, we are there very close to the border with what, um, Guatemala and, the, and on the left hand side we are in an ejido called Benito Juarez uh, at the foothills of the volcan uh, Tacaná uh, about to go on an excursion to look for the resplendent Quetzal. Uh, but my son was very excited to, uh, to look for it because he's named Quetzal <laughs> like the bird. And uh, so in here we have a quiz number six. This is a, also another migratory bird that I'm sure most of you are very, uh, very familiar, very common in the uh, wetlands and rivers. And this is also a bird that comes to winter here in, um, in our in our wetlands and rivers and um, uh, mangroves in uh, western Mexico. So in 2015 we had our first grant and uh, not surprisingly this uh, grant was um, provided through the Rotary International Foundation in collaboration with the Klamath Bird Observatory and also the Ashland Rotary Club, the Shasta Valley the High Desert, Bend, and the Cottage Grove, uh, at District 5110 uh, from Oregon and uh, Northern California, together with the Rotary Club of uh, Bahia de Jaltemba. So this was a lot of fun. Um, during uh, over six months, we visited seven different communities and basically, uh, uh, help people with uh, uh, developing uh, their abilities for uh, bird identification and also familiarizing with, uh, with the idea of bird watching. We work with many different communities, you know, uh, people from different ages, from children to uh, college uh, students. Uh, we were able to provide um, some educational materials. And in some of the cases, we also uh, provided um, uh, some like uh, uh, binoculars and uh, and books, you know, and other uh, like uh, field books for some of the more enthusiastic um, students, so that they could develop their own uh, their own business. Uh, for instance, in the right hand side, you can see uh, Jesus from a, com a neighboring community called Chacala. And uh, Jesus, uh, after this workshop, actually, he started his own uh, bird watching company. And, uh, and other of the students were also very keen, you know, on seeing bird watching as an economic development opportunity. These were the first. Uh, uh, seeds that we uh, saw, you know, uh, uh, back in 2015. And uh, we ended the workshop with a visit from uh, John Alexander and also from the Climate Bird Observatory and also Tatiana Sanchez there on the right, or, sorry, on the left hand side of the, of the photograph, uh, the larger photograph. We are doing a, a, a workshop there on bird monitoring with some of our uh, team um, students. And here comes another more colorful quiz. This I know it's becoming a little more difficult. This is the male of a very, very colorful migratory species that uh, is not as much a Western 
bird, you know, but it does go to a southern and a south, south, southeastern U.S. And uh, it also is a, a common visitor here in the, the west coast of Mexico. So uh, also in 2015, we celebrated for the first time the International Migratory Bird Day, which is a celebration promoted by Environment for the Americas. And, uh, and you can see in there some of the community activities that we did, you know, like uh, uh, field outings and we started, you know, like doing art and other, uh, other artistic activities with uh, children, but also um, we started a community garden, garden where we used to uh, paint um, and make different art pieces with uh, uh, people from uh, the local community in order to help their economy, you know, to sell them uh, to, uh, to, for tourists, you know, and to bird watchers to help the local economy. So this was one of the first efforts that we had, you know, back in uh, 2015 to uh, sort of make a connection, you know, for bird watching with the local community, you know, so that people could stop like uh, killing birds for food, which actually used to happen, or to capture them to sell them in the in the uh, pet trade uh, market. So this was one way, you know, providing economic alternative was one of the ways that we could um, help our uh, local economy, and this is uh, this is some of the result of the. Of the world. You can see some of the colorful pieces, you know, and like um, some um, art pieces made by the local community. Also in 2015, we started to uh, have uh, some uh, uh, important uh, uh, collaborations for conservation birding. Uh, in particular, we had uh, one of our first, we call them a, a birding retreats with uh, uh, the Boise State University. Uh, but it's also a, a, a hosting the Intermountain Bird Observatory. Back then it was called the Idaho Bird Observatory, together with Alvaro's Adventures Tours. And uh, we did a uh, first, um, I, I believe it was like a 10 day uh, trip all over the West Coast, I mean, all over like the Banderas Bay region, you know, and including places like San Blas and the Puerto Vallarta Botanical Gardens during this uh, amazing experience that was aimed also to uh, support uh, conservation sites, you know. So we were combining these uh, field trips with uh, raising money for conservation. Here's another of our uh, common. Uh, uh, species. This is not necessarily migratory, but it's also a, a bird that is probably resident all year round in Oregon. And uh, uh, it's also a resident species here in, here in Mexico. And it's, uh, uh, we can find them in most um, uh, aquatic ecosystems, including the rivers and estuaries. So uh, also in 2016, uh, we had, we were invited uh, to participate at a, a, another um, Partners in Flight meeting in uh, Guadalajara, Mexico. And this was helping us to consolidate our, uh, our strategy and also our partnerships at the local level. During all these years, since 2012, back into this year, into 2016, we weren't able to start our uh, research work for the Yellow Breasted Chat uh, uh, initiative that we started back in 2012, or at least uh, conceiving it. And it was after this meeting in Guadalajara that um, things really started to uh, to come together, but also at the local level in San Pancho, it was already our six year working with the uh, management of uh, water lilies 
and uh, we wrote our first uh, manuscript proposal for a management plan for the local explorer. And uh, we have a problem with the uh, invasive species, uh, in particular water lilies that uh, take over the oxygen and it's a, it's a big one. So there we have some of the images of our work with um, the, the management of a uh, water lily. So this is part of the work that uh, uh, birds uh, got us uh, uh, get involved with. And uh, also other community projects like um, this informative sign project. And this is a project that we started in San Pancho and that eventually uh, went to other communities. And uh, the basic idea was to uh, make these uh, informative signs for uh, different birding trails around the community in order to uh, help uh, both uh, locals and visitors to uh, appreciate the bird diversity and also to provide access to uh, maps and to uh, ever checklists and also to uh, integrate uh, other community members, especially other businesses as part of the, as part of the game, you know, uh, they were actually, other businesses were actually the sponsors of this program and uh, that we started also to replicate in other uh, communities. Also in 2016, we started to uh, do, uh, you know, to be more, literally more creative and to start doing different art workshops uh, with children and with adults in the community, uh, specifically to uh, raise the attention on uh, parrots, you know, and uh, uh, these uh, uh, local species that are uh, subject to trade. So we wanted to, uh, to do these art workshops to internalize, you know, the, the importance of conserving these birds. And actually uh, different community members got to share their art pieces uh, to help our conservation uh, mission. And here's one of the uh, uh, local species uh, of parrots, speaking of parrots, this is uh, not exactly a parrot, uh, but it's also a bird that you can find in different parts of um, uh, Mexico and Latin America. Going back to 2017, we have another important uh, Oregon connection, and this is uh, through the Audubon Society of Portland, who uh, also uh, we started to, uh, 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 to do a couple of uh, uh, multiple day trips with them. This is another uh, image of the, our conservation trips and the, in the center we have some uh, university students uh, who were, um, uh, they are uh, donating uh, that, that huge uh, box in the center, it's a nest box uh, made for, uh, for military cause at a preserve and uh, this is one of the projects we support. Birds also took me to, a, to a, a conservation meeting from the, uh, the American Society of Biology and Conservation in San Jose, Costa Rica. And also I attended uh, the six um, uh, old uh, partners in flight meeting where I was able to show some of the work from the San Pancho Bird Observatory. And uh, finally in 2017, we get all the permits in line to start this uh, trinational uh, research work uh, for the yellow breasted chat. So uh, finally, after five years of uh, seeking uh, the science collection permits and to get all the resources uh, uh, lined up, we are able to uh, start this um, this research program with uh, the help of a student from um, British Columbia uh, University and also with the support of uh, Environment Canada, uh, the Klamath Bird Observatory and also the University of Guadalajara 
here in Mexico. I will share a little bit more about this, um, this program. And now uh, in this quiz, we have not, not one, but two migratory species that are very common in wetlands. Uh, so you can name um, either one of them. Yeah. Going, uh, coming closer to uh, the current day, you can see how the, the groups of people are growing, you know, and, and also our work is becoming uh, more articulated. So uh, during 2018, our research uh, with a yellow-breasted chat continues, but also we continue to forge um, new collaborations like um, this uh, partnership with a nonprofit in San Diego, California called Ocean Connectors to uh, uh, bring environmental education opportunities to uh, uh, public schools. Uh, during 2018 and 2019, we held uh, uh, Ocean Connectors to reach uh, over a thousand um, school kids per year in a different, about 20 different schools in, a, a, in the region. So this was a very, very um, a amazing experience. And also we got a, a first uh, a, a grant from the Cornell Lab of Ornithology to do a, this community outreach and education. These are some of the results of our outings with the local schools through the, uh, with the support of um, Cornell Lab of Ornithology. We were uh, delivering a project called um, uh, Get to Know the Birds in, like, uh, in Your Community or something like that. And uh, we did many, many uh, outings in different schools. It was quite a, quite a, a, a fun experience. And uh, here we have uh, another of our uh, migratory species. This is a male of um, this great uh, uh, species that connects us. You know, uh, they winter here in our area and they are also very common along the West Coast. I'm sure you're familiar with this bird. Also in 2018, um, we delivered a training uh, workshop for about uh, 15 adult uh, students. So we were literally training the next generation of uh, nature guides in the area with the support of um, some local foundations as well as uh, uh, ocean connectors. And uh, this was a, a, a great experience to share, you know, with other local guides and to translate the, the knowledge and the experience that I uh, earned guiding with, uh, uh, with younger people or, or, or with people who, uh, you know, uh, uh, who were starting their career as uh, nature guides. These are some of the photographs. Here we are at Estero El Salado, which is a nature preserve in Puerto Vallarta. It's a mangrove preserve, and we were doing a, a bird photography um, a training in this, uh, in, this, uh, in this preserve. And then um, 2019 uh, comes about, and uh, we start uh, getting uh, information, you know, like this study that I'm sure you are familiar with uh, by multiple uh, institutions, including the Cornell Lab of Ornithology and um, uh, institutions like the uh, Bird Conservancy of the Rockies. And uh, many scientists were uh, releasing this uh, study that was showing that uh, uh, about uh, one in four uh, songbirds, you know, had gone since 2070 of today. So this was very, uh, very concerning. Here's one of our, one other uh, forest bird that connects our, our forest. 
And also uh, during 2019, we were starting to, uh, to have uh, huge challenges uh, uh, here in our region with the construction of a new highway, seeing a lot of uh, habitat destruction, you know, as, as we were uh, also receiving this information on the, you know, the different uh, 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 or the steep decline in many different species of birds. So uh, we started to uh, help in the monitoring, you know, of uh, uh, this uh, highway construction and also uh, this uh, led us into a, a sort of a accelerating or working hard in, in our uh, land conservation um, strategy. This is a photograph also in 2019. We participated um, with the Puerto Vallarta Bird and Nature Festival with many other uh, organizations in the, in the region. This is held at the Puerto Vallarta Botanical Gardens. And also we had the opportunity of um, working uh, on yet another uh, um, a multiple day trip with, in this case, with the University of Guadalajara and the Rock, Rocky Mountain Bird Observatory. They are based in uh, Fort Collins, uh, Colorado. And uh, we did uh, this uh, Western Mexico Bird Conservation Retreat, which was uh, intended to support um, the different conservation efforts uh, held by the three organizations. Or the, the university and the two uh, non-profit organizations in Colorado and in Mexico. So this, this is uh, some of the photographs from this um, seven-day trip in April 2019. And in here, we move into a different crowd of people. This is a meeting from um, uh, uh, a group of, uh, uh, it's like a network of non-profit organizations and then in 2019, we took this training, you know, uh, to become better at running our nonprofit organization together with many different nonprofits uh, all over the area. We also uh, held a different, you know, we, we participated with a, a, a nonprofit based in San Diego called the Science Exchange, you know, in summer 2019, uh, assisting. Um, students you know uh, like uh, uh, like uh, one, well particular one one uh, student from San Diego State University in making these uh, threat analysis of priority resident birds and also uh, we continued with our uh, bird banding program uh, uh, training uh, students from different Mexican universities like the women that you can see in the screen. These are some of photographs from this collaboration with the Science Exchange and also with the uh, local, um, uh, the, our sea turtle conservation program. You can see on the upper right hand side uh, some uh, educational activities from uh, SEMBAB, this organization that I shared you uh, back at the beginning when I was holding a bird in my shoulder. Uh, we continue to collaborate with them. And uh, this is a more difficult uh, species. It's not necessarily a migratory species, although uh, these birds have been uh, seen all the way up to uh, the coast of uh, Oregon. They are rare in Oregon, but they can go to California sometimes. And, uh, and they are also uh, found in islands, you know, uh, uh, along the Pacific coast. I'm sure uh, some of you have uh, known them and they are named after their colorful feet. <laughs> so uh, we're getting close to, to the end of the presentation. In uh, September 2019, you can see that the, the crowd is, uh, is growing. This is a meeting of, um, this is the third meeting of the Urban Bird Program. This is a program that was also started by uh, NAPSI Mexico. And NAPSI is the North American Bird Conservation Initiative that is part of uh, this Partners in Flight Group. So um, 
by 2019, you, uh, we had, I think, uh, close to 100 uh, Mexican cities with uh, 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 representatives of this uh, urban birth program. And uh, I was uh, very proud to represent the work of uh, the Banderas Bay uh, urban birth program in this, um, at this meeting and also uh, been able to share, you know, with other Mexican peers, the work that we had done over the years. Uh, coming back from that meeting, I was able to, uh, or we organized here in San Pancho, uh, uh, our, I think it was like the third or fourth uh, uh, migratory birthday, which had uh, many uh, events and, and talks and uh, outings, uh, for the community, you know, and also art activities in collaboration with many different uh, uh, institutions and other companies and nonprofits uh, from the area. So it was a two-day uh, event. And it was uh, held here in San Pancho. Uh, also in 2019, no, actually in 2020, we did for the first time our Christmas bird count for. Uh, this area between San Pancho, Punta de Mita, and uh, uh, La Cruz de Guanacaxle, together with uh, some bir local birding clubs. And uh, we started to do our first uh, Christmas bird count efforts in 2020. And also we started to participate in this uh, a strategy called Adaptur that it's a uh, it's a strategy led by the uh, German Development Agency to advance the adaptation of the tourism industry in Mexico to climate change. So Adaptur is basically about uh, bringing together all the sectors uh, for ecosystem-based adaptation to happen and uh, as a way to for the tourism industry to adapt to climate change. It's basically telling the tourism industry, the hotels uh, and the, the restaurants, you know, uh, that they, they need to invest in conservation of ecosystems because this is the only way we can, or the best way to uh, adapt to climate change. So I have been participating in this, um, in this group and uh, also uh, representing different uh, conservation projects through our organization and also a uh, sort of uh, increasing the uh, information and raising the uh, the speech you know and the um, the dialogue on climate change here's another uh, of our migratory birds that connect us and uh, breeds in the, the US and Canada and winters here in Mexico. And uh, these are some of the images of our uh, in 2020, at the beginning of the last year, we began a, a second uh, training uh, workshop for uh, a neighboring community called San Ignacio. So we started to train um, uh, new uh, new guides right before the pandemic started in March of 2020. And also we started a project uh, to, uh, to promote a hummingbird or pollin you know, gardens for pollinators, you know, so like basically hummingbird gardens and, uh, and birdscaping. Uh, during 2020, we continued with our bird banding program, having many uh, different uh, visitors from uh, the U.S. and Canada uh, helping at our bird banding program. You can see there on the left-hand side at the bottom, uh, that's a, a kind of a family reunion to uh, wrap up our banding season. And we have actually some folks from Oregon and from Canada and Mexico. So quite a trinational crew and family uh, uh, celebrating a, a bird watching. And you can see also some of the some of the birds that we banned and a little bit of our uh, bird banding operation here in Mexico, as well as uh, some of the sponsors and collaborators 
uh, that over the years have made this uh, this program uh, possible. In the upper left uh, side, you can see we are already doing the elbow the elbow shake right as the pandemic started, and the. Uh, and during the last year after the pandemic started, uh, many of the projects were aimed for like uh, economic recovery. So during the last year, um, we helped uh, funding a project for um, uh, making paper out of water lilies and to support the local economy by doing that, uh, and support a group of women and, um, and young people. So, we uh, did a tremendous uh, community effort. And uh, this is another migratory uh, species that uh, it's probably not uh, common at all in, uh, in Oregon, but uh, you can see them in uh, Southern US, uh, particularly around uh, Louisiana and Texas. And they are very uh, common in the winter. Well, actually in the, in the, in the winter and fall, actually in the summer, these birds uh, have kind of a weird migratory pattern. And uh, these are some, of, some more images of our bird banding program in 2020. You can see we're already wearing masks and uh, we had to uh, reduce the, the operation. And then in the upper right corner uh, is my daughter, Liz who's my youngest. And then in the bottom left, you can see uh, my whole family uh, visiting the, the bird banding operation. Uh, I'm with my wife and my three kids. <laughs> so they have been uh, also a very important part of uh, all this work. Some more photographs of our bird banding uh, operation. Uh, in the upper left, you can see a, a, a this is a Virginia uh, warbler, which was a rare bird that we uh, we saw this uh, this this last uh, actually this year we had a couple of Virginia warblers. They were uh, kind of backgrounds, and then in the upper left uh, side of the screen, uh, there, it's a black cap vireo. It's a protected species in uh, in the U.S. and also a, a frequent visitor during the winter. Some more images of uh, our crew. And also in uh, uh, 2020, we started to, uh, uh, to strengthen our uh, site conservation uh, effort, you know, building capacity at different ecotourism uh, uh, sites and also to assist uh, the project funding, you know, for these, um, these different preserves. So, uh, we are um, working more actively on uh, helping um, different conservation sites. And uh, after the pandemic, a lot of the work, as you can imagine, started to become uh, virtual. So I didn't get to travel as much. So these are some of the talks that I have been doing over the last, um, the last years, you know, and making many uh, virtual events and promoting bird watching from home. This is another beautiful bird that uh, it's not, uh, I know uh, it's not going to be fair because it's not migratory and, uh, and it's probably not, a, not as common in the U.S. probably other than Florida. And uh, but, uh, for those of you who have been to uh, Mexico or somewhere in the tropics, you're probably uh, familiar with this bird that uh, likes to be in the marshes and uh, in wetlands. These are some more images of uh, different talks that I have uh, uh, offered, you know, and invited over uh, the, the last year. And uh, I want to start now um, sharing the more uh, recent work that we are doing because um, since the pandemic started, we were somehow um, forced, you know, by the circumstances to change our approach of our educational and community outreach programs. 
And uh, also uh, something that we were very fortunate is that uh, we were able to adapt very quickly to this changing situation, uh, basically because we found the sort of the link between the health aspect, you know, of bird watching, and we were we found a way to translate it into a into a into a into projects, you know, to help the 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 well-being of people. So uh, during the 2020, we delivered this uh, first uh, phase of a project called uh, I Bird Watch, I Improve My Health, in collaboration with different foundations. And uh, we basically uh, provided, I'm oh, sorry, we basically provided um, educational um, materials and uh, also uh, binoculars and uh, field guides to, uh, to uh, young and uh, adult people um, from different from five community centers. And we use also the materials from the Celebrate the Urban Bird Program, uh, developed in collaboration with Cornell Lab of Ornithology, together with uh, some uh, board games and uh, some of the uh, 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 ID guides that we developed uh, 10 years ago with Entre Amigos, you know, with our community center. We use some of these materials, we kind of translated in, into games and into these um, educational materials that we brought for free to uh, underserved uh, people in uh, uh, five different communities. Um, and, uh, and we were able, the, the whole uh, idea of this was being able to, uh, estimate the impact of these uh, materials and of, of these uh, guidance that we provided for people to uh, learn identifying birds, the more common birds in their area. And we wanted to know their impact on their well-being. So we um, uh, designed some uh, tests. These are the results from the 2020 uh, um, project, you know, uh, the blue line is the, how the, the emotions were at the beginning. And basically what we found is that uh, we did some uh, wellness uh, tests at the beginning or surveys, and then some at the end. And um, we basically found that with our, uh, with our intervention, we met, we help people to reduce the uh, stress, uh, frustration, and the sense of isolation. You know, we didn't necessarily make them feel happier, and uh, but we make them uh, reduce, you know, the stress and the frustration, which was uh, a, we we were able to quantify and to uh, get an estimate of those. Um, of those uh, uh, well-being estimates, you know, so that helped us to uh, uh, also get funding and support uh, for the next phase. And here we are, we're coming close to the end and we have uh, the mail of, uh, of a bird that likes to be in orchards. <laughs> and, uh, and as you can see, it's eating some bananas in there. They are. They also like to uh, winter in our in our area and migrate to the U.S. During this year, um, we developed the second uh, stage of our program. Uh, I bird watch. I improve my health with uh, different organizations. Uh, in this case, we also had uh, university students volunteering as part of the program, as well as uh, other members of the Urban Bird Program of Puerto Vallarta and Valle de Banderas. So uh, we work with different nonprofit organizations and also with different um, uh, uh, like uh, conservation areas like Estero El Salado and uh, 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 Macaw Sanctuary called Rancho El Santuario. Uh, and we, uh, this year we had about uh, 40, 
40 some, I think it was 43 uh, beneficiaries in, in our program. Uh, who received again uh, uh, binoculars and all these uh, learning materials as, as well as the uh, guidance. You know, sometimes it was virtual and we did some uh, occasional field trips. You know, uh, in this year we were very fortunate and very blessed to uh, work with uh, people with special capacities like uh, uh, some, of the, uh, some of the people you see on the right side of the screen and uh, we found some new uh, new boundaries and opportunities that I will share with you uh, more about. So uh, these are some, some more of the photographs. We work with uh, community centers in uh, underserved communities and uh, some of the children and uh, adults, you know, including these uh, 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 college students who uh, um, are also vulnerable, you know, to like depression or um, uh, like a school abandonment. They were, um, or like school drop-off, they, uh, they were part of the program. These are some of the educational games that we provided. And they are uh, actually a, a based on the, a, the drawings made by children uh, in San Pancho, uh, back in 2010. This was uh, one of the presentation I was invited to do last year um, uh, for a nonprofit in Ch Chicago called Faith in Place. And these are the, the talks, you know, different talks that I have been invited to participate. This is from the local uh, government of Valle de Banderas, that's our municipal government. They invited me to do a talk on the um, the relationship between the well-being of forests and the human health. Uh, I was also recently invited to uh, do uh, this talk called uh, uh, Birds Evoke Happiness for the Urban Bird Program in uh, Lima, Peru. So this was also a virtual talk. And uh, also, well, last year we celebrated uh, the 10 years of San Pancho uh, Birding Club. And uh, we continue to um, sort of readapt, you know, to these uh, uh, new pandemic uh, conditions uh, uh, with our health-oriented programs. We continue with our health rest uh, estuary restoration program. And uh, what you see in the screen now, it's uh, uh, the building at our, uh, at our family's place that we are developing also as a, as a visitor center, you know, and as a, as a training center uh, for, uh, for bird watching. And this is where I am doing the presentation right now. Um, these are, this is some of our uh, current work. We're starting to do these uh, multiple day trips, not only in this area, but also other parts of Mexico. This is a collaboration with a Canadian company. And uh, also, uh, Okay. Here's a, uh, uh, we're coming close to the end. This is a, an endemic bird to Western Mexico. And I know it's going to be a, a difficult one uh, for those of you who haven't been to, uh, to Mexico, but hopefully uh, those of you who have will remember this bird. This is another uh, of the uh, trips that we are doing. This is later this year. This is an 11 day trip with a, a company from, uh, a tour company from Oregon actually. And this is already full. And uh, I'm also starting to do this uh, multiple day uh, trips to uh, Oaxaca with a company from, uh, from the UK. And uh, these are some of the partnerships uh, that we have uh, made over the, over the years. They are not all, and uh, but they are some of the partnerships. Uh, 
And uh, this is the last bird from the, my presentation tonight. This is a, a bird that I, I'm sure the, most of you are familiar with. And uh, although it's a very, very common species, uh, it's, it's migratory and we have them here only during the winter time. So uh, with this, uh, I'm just gonna uh, end my presentation with this, um, this uh, ever uh, animation of a barn swallow migrating uh, throughout the year. And uh, this is fed by uh, uh, observations, you know, from citizen uh, scientists like us who uh, use eBird. And uh, with this, I, I want to uh, thank all of you for your uh, attention. And uh, here's our uh, contact information for the San Pancho Bird Observatory. And uh, that's about it. <laughs> Maybe we can go uh, to the questions. <laughs> Well, thank you, Luis. So if uh, I think we don't have a lot of questions in the chat. And what we do sometimes is to um, invite people to unmute themselves. Sometimes it's easier to ask questions that way. So I will uh, send out that invitation now. It's voluntary, but if you wish, you can just click on that. Uh, Click on that button and unmute yourself and, and ask uh, questions of Luis. What you've accomplished, Luis, is, is really quite incredible. <laughs> and your list of um, list of goals is uh, is 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 uh, wonderful to see. I have a question uh, in the chat. Can we find a list of your tours and the dates? on the website for San Pancho birding? Yes. Uh, uh. Do you, what, what website would we go to if we wanted to sign up for a trip with you? Yes, go to uh, buildingsanpancho.net and then um, um, you can go to the eco tour section. I'm gonna write it down in the chat right now. Okay, okay. And in another uh, paragraph from the chat, John Alexander says, Luis, thanks so much for the inspiration and innovation you bring. The Rotary Grant, this was one of the most elegant collaborative grants I have been involved with. Will you please describe how you linked SPBO's bird conservation mission to what was at that time Rotary's new sustainability initiative by connecting conservation to economic, social, and environmental equity issues? Thank you. Yes, thank you, John, for your question. And uh, yes, this, uh, uh, actually this Rotary Grant was our uh, very first grant that we received uh, as an organization very, uh, very soon after we were um, uh, formalized as a nonprofit. And the Rotary International has this, uh, um, a global like sustainability uh, principles and the way that we uh, sort of uh, tapped into this was the whole idea of our uh, project, our initiative was uh, helping local communities to uh, build capacities, you know, building the local capacities so that local communities could develop their own um, ecotourism uh, 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 programs, but also their own capacity to participate at like a community, community uh, monitoring. And uh, this, uh, um, as I mentioned, resulted in uh, 
many uh, or, or some uh, 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 like uh, new nature guides and uh, communities coming together um, to somehow see bird watching and to see uh, the bird diversity as uh, an important component of our uh, uh, natural capital, you know, that we must um, preserve, you know, and also a one of the beautiful uh, parts of this grant was that we were collaborating with uh, other different uh, clubs, you know, like uh, the, the, our local club in the Haltemba Bay area uh, is uh, integrated by uh, members who are part-time residents coming from different parts, you know, different chapters in the US and Canada. And they are uh, they are very active, and it was uh, just quite uh, quite amazing, you know, to have their um, their support and their input into the project. It was really uh, like uh, not only the 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 birds, you know, uh, uh, brought us together, but also like people representing different flyways, and uh, up to until today, you know, these are some of the most. Um, amazing uh, connections, you know, that we forge and that continue to uh, support us, you know, like uh, six years later after that grant. <laughs> Thank you. Um, let's see what, if there's another question here. Um, I'm not sure I can pronounce this person's name. Um, Helepanio. And he is from Loma Bonita, Oaxaca. And he says, could it be said that birding San Pancho concentrates on terrestrial birds and not on marine ones? Is this intentional? And then he says, excellent presentation. Uh, thank you, uh, uh, Felipe. He's uh, my professor. Uh, from uh, Loma Bonita, Oaxaca. Uh, yes, we, the, the reason we focus more on uh, land birds, Felipe, is because this uh, partners in flight uh, strategy, although it has like a short bird component, we as an organization uh, somehow found more partners in the uh, in the terrestrial birds and the, perhaps because the, our, our diversity here, it's, um, and, and the conservation efforts are more, uh, I, I guess we have a larger diversity of um, uh, land birds and also most of the efforts, uh, at least from partners in flight, are for uh, land birds, you know, and, and terrestrial ecosystems. So uh, I am a marine biologist, and this is probably why Felipe is asking. And uh, so we do work, you know, with some marine uh, uh, ecosystems and uh, uh, aquatic uh, bird programs. So the, our strategy is mostly focused on um, terrestrial birds. Also in the understanding that we are having uh, more of a, a, what we call an integrated coastal zone management, you know, so looking at the coastal areas and, and also uh, many of the threats to marine ecosystems uh, are caused at the top of the mountains, you know, so I think terrestrial birds um, allow us, allow us to, uh, uh, connect different habitats, you know, from the coast, uh, the, the lowlands at the coast, all the way to the highlands. And uh, so this is uh, basically why we uh, decided or why we uh, chose the direction of uh, working more with the uh, land birds. I guess it was um, more, perhaps more strategic, or it's also where where the funding was, you know, so we, uh, in this path, you know, we also have been uh, uh, following the, the pathways of uh, funding and the existing collaborations. And uh, I guess it is because we, uh, we found 
um, the support for uh, uh, land bird conservation more than for marine conservation. And that's why uh, we, we focus in this space. Thank, Thank you. you. We have a question from Eugenia Becker. She says, she says, Luis, when we visited San Pancho, I was enchanted with the beauty and wildlife of the estuary. Can you comment on its environmental value and the current challenges uh, in addition to overgrowth of lilies and how it has fared in the last 10 years? Thank you, uh, Eugenia. Yes, for sure. So, uh, our uh, local estuary, as well as uh, most of the wetlands, you know, in uh, in Mexico, and the, uh, also riparian habitats, are very important for um, wintering birds. You know, actually, the the survival of uh, many of the migratory species, or most of the migratory species that that we saw. Uh, depend on the the health of these um, uh, coastal uh, uh, and terrestrial ecosystems. So, <clears throat> uh, in particular, our uh, our estuary, you know, as well as many of the uh, coastal uh, wetlands here in the area, are um, being uh, threatened by uh, urban development. You know, and also uh, pollution, you know, so we are uh, losing, you know, a little bits of uh, uh, this habitat uh, every year, like by processes like erosion, but also other processes like uh, uh, urban pollution uh, uh, are causing, you know, the, um, the dysfunctioning of these uh, coastal ecosystems. So the water lilies is one of the problems, you know, the, the water lilies were brought to uh, help reduce the pollutants. They were introduced about 20 years ago to try to help, you know, but uh, this introduction was done without uh, like, a, like, a, like a previous assessment, you know, like an environmental uh, assessment study or like an impact assessment. And uh, it causes biodiversity uh, loss, you know, because it uh, basically kills all the fish. And uh, this has a negative effect, not only in the ecosystem itself, you know, uh, uh, by reducing productivity, but also uh, we lose uh, biodiversity and it, it, it has a, a tremendous um, economic impact, you know, uh, for the fisheries and uh, tourism. And also uh, it causes uh, more uh, or like a higher, a higher, higher occurrence of uh, uh, mosquito transmitted diseases. So, uh, uh, this is why uh, we have been working, you know, in collaboration with different, uh, with the private sector. And uh, right now, uh, for the estuary, we actually are in the process of um, uh, uh, receiving, not receiving, but at least we are uh, uh, raising funds uh, and with the support of the German Development Agency and with this uh, climate change adaptation group, we have a great team of people supporting this as a pilot program, um, basically to restore the uh, functioning of the, of the ecosystem. So uh, uh, part of it is also, it has to do with uh, regulating uh, the urban growth, you know, and, and uh, creating incentives for um, developers to sort of uh, um, follow the guidelines, you know, of a uh, 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 healthy development. And uh, so that's kind of the direction that we are um, uh, going with the, with the estuary. It's a very, very rich place. We have uh, registered over uh, 200 species in, at the estuary itself. Uh, and not only birds, but also uh, other um, wildlife like uh, uh, Neotropic River Otter and the uh, American River Crocodiles. 
amongst many others, you know, and uh, 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 many different species of fish. So right now we are um, in that process of um, helping the estuary. Yeah. Another question from John Gallagher. He says, the main conservancy program we hear about is the American Birding Conservancy. Are, is that organization doing projects in your area? Uh, the, you know, uh, not particularly that I, uh, that I hear about here in, uh, in, in, at least in our area. I know that uh, American Bird Conservancy is a member of Partners in Flight. Uh, right. We have applied uh, for funding with them a couple of uh, times, and I know they support uh, different projects in Mexico. Uh, we haven't been fortunate of, oh, you know what? Actually, we have. I have to say that in 2016, they, uh, we got funding from uh, American Bird Conservancy through uh, Paso Pacifico to do a, 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 a short-term uh, research project for a willow flycatcher. We were trying to find uh, overwintering sites for willow flycatcher. So uh, I forgot to uh, mention it in my presentation, but yes, we, we have had a little bit of uh, support from them and uh, they are uh, great partners. Thank you. Thank you for that answer. And thank you for all you've done for many, many people to get them excited about birds and from all age levels, from very young to senior citizens, I can tell from the pictures. Um, I wanted to, for people that have a pencil and paper, um, if you ha didn't write down his website, it's www.birdingsanpancho.net slash echo tours. Um, I know myself when I'm typing in addresses, I often just put .com and I forget that there's other endings. And that uh, one time I was looking for him and couldn't find it because I had put .com. So remember that it's birdingsonpancho.net slash echo tours if you'd like to look up his website and perhaps even sign up for a tour. Um, we went in um, the end of February and it was, it was a good time to go, I felt like. Um, did you have anything to add, Luis? Uh, just to thank you, uh, Judy, and to uh, all the Salem Audubon Society uh, uh, team for making this presentation uh, possible, as well as to uh, all the people who uh, joined us tonight. I hope that you enjoy the presentation, and I hope that this uh, gets to uh, inspire more uh, more people to uh, to do uh, this uh, bird conservation work. Uh, for me, it has been very. Uh, I feel very fortunate to be able to do uh, to do this work and to share with you uh, with you tonight a little bit of my uh, my story and my passion for for birds and uh, for conservation. <laughs> Well, Salem Audubon thanks you so much for your yeah. program. And I hope we will hear from you again in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you, Luis. Keep up the good work. Uh, good evening, everyone. And uh, I guess if, uh, if, if, we got, if we have folks with the, with the answers. Um, oh, that's right. I was going to ask, are you going to go through the 20 birds? If, or how if, anybody, uh, if anybody has them or oh well I can I can uh, I don't think I have the um, you know I wouldn't like to go through the whole presentation but uh, I think I, I do have a list of the species I don't know if you have that handy uh, hold on I, I will I will 
anybody got to write uh, all the all the birds uh, did someone out there think they got all 20 <laughs> 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 Probably not. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, so if nobody uh, is answering, what well, I can still say, you know, so number one was brown pelican. Number two was a spotted sandpiper. Number three, killdeer. Number four, belted king, uh, kingfisher. Number five, black and white warbler. Number six, osprey. Number seven, painted bunting. Number eight, green heron. Number nine, military macaw. Number 10 and 11, they were together, were American coots and a northern pintail. Number 12, a summer tanager. Was probably a western tanager, right? Yeah. It's a yeah, western. So. Uh, number 13, a Nashville warbler. Number 14, blue footed booby. Number 15, willet again. No, I didn't have Willet, I had Kildir. Uh, number 16, a uh, black bellied whistling duck. Uh, number 17, Northern Jacana. Number 18, Orchard Oriole. Number 19, Rosset Crown Motmot, that's an endemic. And uh, number 20, Turkey Vulture. <laughs> How many got more than 10 right? <laughs> well, I think people are probably uh, uh, not in a, not in a ID mode. <laughs> that's okay. If we happen to have any any answers, uh, I'll be glad to uh, to send the book. <laughs> How much does the book cost? Right. Well, if uh, there's uh, no more uh, questions, well, uh, I think you're on mute. Just say no, thank you. Uh, Luis, what was the cost of your book? Oh. Excuse me. The, What's the cost of your book? The price. The price. The oh, the price. Uh, you know, this book I, I think it sells in Amazon for like uh, twenty dollars. You can find it in Amazon. There's a title, and uh, yeah, I think it sells for like 20, 20 some dollars in Amazon. <laughs> um, go ahead, John. Well, that's all I was asking. Oh, okay. Uh, for those uh, who are still participating, if you would like to say, stay for sharing, of your bird observations and bird experiences in the last, in during the summer when we haven't been meeting, um, be sure you turn on your, be sure you unmute yourself. <laughs> well, and I we will can... even bring people in. Uh, as uh, panelists, so they can turn their camera on. Oh, okay. Um, Tim can make you a panelist if you'd like to stay for sharing. I think I can do that for some of you. Maybe not all of you. For some reason, it does not let me promote some to panelists. I huh. haven't had that experience before. I see John and Eugenia, Luis and myself, Tim, I don't see your picture. I just want to say while we're waiting uh, to Luis that I thought it was uh, particularly timely that uh, you had uh, devices to help and, and uh, um, documents uh, talking about the wellness uh, impact of birding uh, for in our pandemic situation. Uh, I think that's really important news for um, our situation today uh, all over the world. And I think it's really great that you brought that to surface. And 
I'd like to see more information on that. Uh, I'm, I'm planning to go to your website, hoping to find some more on how we can incorporate more of that. Yes, for sure, John. Uh, uh, you're welcome to uh, uh, also to write me, you know, and I'll be, uh, I'll be happy to share more information on that. For us, it has been a, a very exciting uh, path, you know, right now, actually, we got uh, two projects funded and finished already. And uh, we have two more lined up, you know, for the next year. And the, the, the two projects that we are developing next, uh, I think I was telling you uh, earlier, uh, we found this uh, inclusiveness barrier. We found out that uh, the materials that we developed during stage one and two for this project um, were not made for uh, people with uh, special capacities, you know, or different capacities such as you know, Down syndrome or uh, uh, visual or auditive um, disability. So uh, right now we are beginning, you know, to develop materials for them so that we can sort of uh, transcend, you know, or break this uh, uh, inclusiveness barrier. And uh, I, right now I also like uh, elaborating new, you know, thinking of new ways to to get the wellness, you know, like we know that, you know, our contribution is, um, is, uh, is solid and that it helps, you know, their, their life to be better, you know, we, we know it in their eyes and in their emotion, but how do we, you know, how do we prove it, you know, how do we come with a test, you know, like we, this last um, stage, we use standardized test, um, but um, with people, uh, people with special capacities, like we weren't able to, to, uh, to get those um, surveys to work, you know? So mm -hmm. the, the survey didn't work, but that doesn't mean that we didn't have a positive impact. You know? So yeah. it's, just, uh, it's just like rethinking, you know, how we get to them, you know, with materials that will have a stronger impact. Mm -hmm. And we believe, I'm, I'm completely sure that if we are able to get to um, this uh, sector in the community, you know, the more uh, vulnerable sector, uh, then the rest of the people who are normal, it will be a piece of cake, you know? <laughs> I don't know but yeah, I think that's very important work. I really congratulate your efforts in that regard and like to hear more about that. For sure. Uh, Thank you. Yeah, I'll, keep you uh, I'll keep you all posted. And uh, yeah, we're right now in the process of writing uh, uh, some uh, scientific articles and uh, and, uh, and yeah, we have, you know, a little bit of that information in, uh, in English. You know, most of the uh, uh, information is in Spanish in our website, but you can easily translate it. Okay. Uh -huh. Thank you. It looks like there are 10 people left with us, but only Five of us have our picture up here. You know, I've tried to promote the rest, Judy, to panelists, but for some reason, Zoom is not uh, doing it. So they, they still have the ability to talk, uh, but I cannot bring them in as panelists. Um, oh dear, so. So I'm not sure what's going on there. I say, Hilipanio Madaka is yeah, with yeah. us. Hilipanio Madaka and the Jasmine. And uh, Montserrat Ramirez Hernandez. Yeah. <laughs> and so are, are these, um, these last three people, are they signed up in from Mexico also? I believe Just, so, yeah. Jasmine Elenio Quijosa. Do any of you have some bird sightings you'd like to talk about? <laughs> when we do this with our Salem group, we just go around the circle. And for instance, if I started, I'd say, well, we've had lots and lots of goldfinches. 
at our feeders. I guess they're getting all fattened up for their migration. Um, and other than that, not much that's unusual. John, how about you? Let's see, our, our hummingbirds, the Rufus hummingbirds disappeared about a week ago. Uh, we had some for quite a while, at the, but they've been gone for a little over a week. I just saw, I've been hearing off and on for um, a month or so, uh, Western tanagers and finally saw uh, a female Western tanager at our bird feeder here the other day. So it's fattening up on its way to Mexico, I'm sure. And uh, so that, that's been fun to our backyard birds. Uh, I took an adventure today to go down to the local um, uh, pond there at um, and, uh, oh, the, the wildlife, uh, uh, what is it, um, our wildlife thing where we, we had uh, uh, Pintail Marsh, they had uh, a lot of uh, snakes, the garden, uh, garter snakes that were over three foot long eating frogs there. It was uh, quite a sight to behold. Uh, <laughs> It's a little bit different than our usual going down to see the birds, but <laughs> right, right. It was uh, really quite a an unusual thing for me to see. Eugenia, are you seeing lots of new, different birds now that you're in Bend? Well, just to a certain extent. Do I have two microphones on? Let me see if I can kill one of them. Yeah, there's two of them here. I'm going to, I'll kill this one, Eugenia, and uh, go ahead and try talking now. There you go. I think that fixed it. The smoke from the wildfires, hmm. it doesn't, does it? No, I don't know why that's happening. And I'm afraid I don't know either. Uh, we can still hear you okay. Yeah, we can still hear you though. It's not blowing us out. <laughs> I echo. A little bit. Uh, the smoke from the wildfires in this part of, well, we get the, the smoke blowing in from uh, the mountains and from Idaho and from California. And it's been very, very heavy. But um, Sun River Nature Center, I've just had a brief trip there. Um, they had a lot of mountain chickadees, which were fun to see, which we don't see in Salem, and a um, large number of trumpeter swans in the, um, in the ponds. Whoops. We can hear you. Go ahead. Can you? Oh, it yeah. said I was... I had been removed from the meeting. Well, I, I, there was two instances, Eugenia, and that's why we're getting the echo. So I stopped one of those instances. Oh, thank but you. But we can still see you and hear you. Okay, great. But Sun River Nature Center, I could tell, has birds around in certain areas if you go on their paths. So if somebody's in this area, they might want to try that. And I'm planning to go back, but been stopped a few times. Chevron Park, which Kathy Patterson referred me to, a um, lot of people, but in particular, I saw numerous Lewis's woodpeckers. Mm. And at first I just thought it was crows. And then I, but then I got a view, good view of them and they were Lewis's woodpeckers. Um, Possibly, I'm not sure. Tim, do you know, do they migrate south in the fall? No, I think they do not. I think they're year round there. Okay. Um, used to, and they will sometimes come over across the mountains in the winter, but I think for the most part, they're resident there in Eastern Oregon. Okay, that was fun. And 
having at first thought I saw crows, I was pleased to read that both Sibley and National Geographic um, mention their similarity to crows. But around Stone Lodge, the senior facility where I'm li living, lots of people feed the birds here, but what they attract are dozens of house sparrows, mm. which is a little bit discouraging to see. And the house sparrows, I think, drive out most of the rest of the birds. Um, they also have quite a few scrub trays, but people love seeing them. So I try not to say anything too negative. But anyway, that's what I'm seeing. Tim, you have any sharing to do? Well, I have one, one thing to share. Uh, I mentioned how great pintail is these days. And these two birds were at pintail last week. Now, it's the first time I've ever seen these birds in Oregon. These are snowy egrets. And they spent several hours chasing each other around the marsh there and then disappeared. <laughs> so they weren't there very long, but it was, it was really fun to see them. I've never seen them in Oregon before. We were missing two, uh, two local uh, snow egrets here in San Pancho. It's probably them. <laughs> yeah, they knew you were coming. <laughs> yeah, they were announcing uh, the presentation. <laughs> so, Luis, do you, do you have some sharing to add? Well, yes. Uh, you know, uh, uh, today... Well, since yesterday we had a, here in our garden, we, uh, we, we have a birdscaping project. So we, we, we plant every, you know, all the plants have a purpose uh, either for birds or humans. And uh, we have this night jasmine that makes these um, uh, white flowers. Right. The, the chachalacas love them, you know. So right now we have a family of... Uh, uh, Rufus Belli chachalacas, they are these gigantic, uh, like, you know, chachalacas is like a, like a turkey. So they come to our garden to feed on this, uh, and uh, to these little balls, and we had also a, uh, to the, the little blossoms, you know, and uh, we had also a, a, a group of uh, black throated magpie jays coming to, uh, to eat these little fruits today, so, uh, it's a it's very exciting time of the year for us, you know, because when these little fruits uh, come, we have a, a, a lot of perfume at night with the night jasmine, but uh, during the day, it's uh, it's quite a show to see the, the chachalacas and the magpie jays to come uh, feed, like right in our garden. So we are, we're spoiled. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Sounds good. Hasmin? Can you hear me? Has, has, yes. Do you have some uh, something to share about birds? I don't know if she's muted or if she can hear me. She is not muted. And she is gone. Oh. <laughs> she got she shy. left. Huh? She oh. got shy. <laughs> <laughs> So oh, no, I called on her. Oh no, I gotta talk. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Oh well. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I guess we've come to the end of a very nice program. Thank you all. Thank you, Judy. Luis. San Pancho. It's been I don't know exactly what year um, Dorothy Patterson and Kathy, I mean, Kathy Patterson and uh, Dorothy Kimball and Vivian Torgerson and I came down and toured San Pancho, but that was a wonderful experience. And I would love to go back someday. I don't know that it's very likely, but I would certainly love to. 
Thank you, Eugenia. Whenever that is, you know, uh, you're all welcome uh, here in San Pancho. And uh, I hope, uh, you know, the conditions allow it, you know. Uh, uh, yes. And uh, yeah, I'll be very happy to, uh, to guide you again. <laughs> Well, congratulations you on how your organization has been thriving over these last several years. I think it's great. Thank you so much. I can see over the years that the groups of people keep getting larger and larger, which is very encouraging. Very encouraging. More people interested in bird conservation. We can use all we can get, that is for sure. And you're doing a lot to encourage it. So thank you again for the program. Really enjoyed it. And good night, everyone. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.